This fantasy football top 10 tight ends edition of the sports gambling podcast is brought to you by bird dogs shorts dominate summer with an amazing pair of shorts and a free Yeti style tumbler. When you order over at bird dogs.com slash pool, that's bird dogs.com slash pool. To the sports gambling podcast. I'm Sean stacking the money green with my partner in picks, Ryan. Real money Kramer. What's happening, Kramer? Dog. Uh, we've made it. We've made it through the the the, the summer. <laughs> uh, actually, summer just started. Right? Oh, okay. Well, we're talking tight ends. I thought it was first touchdown season. No, and, no. and, and maybe we should we are gonna be breaking down our top ten fantasy football tight ends, but yeah, when applicable, I will definitely be throwing out some guys I'm looking to play for either first touchdown or the uh, super generous two touchdown market. Of course, everyone recalls my mm. hundred to one Austin Hooper two touchdowns Who? and Tennessee money line. Who can Let's forget? Go. Who can forget? I mean, they they played the clip on Doctor Phil Ryan. Uh, mm. What more do you What more do you need? We of course are in the Blue Wire Studios, beautiful, beautiful Las Vegas here. Sean, when did Doctor Phil happen? It, it when did Dr. Since Phil? it was after football season, right? Yes. Yeah. I think it aired sometime in January, but I taped it in there, November. There's a whole sector of the audience that we're going to have to, <laughs> we might have to do a, a, a maybe yeah. a kickoff weekend watch party. Oh yeah. Yeah. We we'll definitely Re uh, remind people replay the Dr. Phil episode. That was a ton of fun. And uh, we did a watch party with that. Shout out to my boy, uh, Dr. Phil there. I mean, we are in Vegas, the epicenter of hijacking pleasure centers. Oh yes. Hijacking the pleasure centers. My boy, Dr. Phil, uh, we got a, uh, obviously we already have done quarterbacks and running backs. We got tight ends here. Next episode up is going to be the top 10 fantasy football receivers. I play oh, wow. the music. Just the listen to those trumpets, Blair Ryan, big trumpets guy. Oh, just love it. NFL is it's a great time. Great time to be out in Vegas. Of course, Vegas. Hot as shit. If you're coming out here for NFL week one or super hot. coming out here to draft your fantasy football team, it's really hot. Not gonna lie. Really awesome. You know what helps you beat the heat? That's right. A pair of bird dogs shorts. Love my bird dog shorts. Again, the, the, the fit is perfect. The built-in liner. Say goodbye to boxers. Say goodbye to underwear. It's just great. Uh, again, the anti stink sweat wicking fabric keeps it cool and dry all day. It, I, I can't imagine a day this summer where I won't be wearing a, a pair of these bird dogs. I, they're just amazing. I, I can't. It, Ryan, words don't do these bird dog shorts justice. That's how comfortable they are. Also, got a pair of the Jaggers. Highly, highly enjoy those. Can't wait to be back here in Las Vegas. NFL week one rocking my bird dog shorts. Go to birddogs.com slash pool. Enter promo code pool for a free Yeti style tumbler with your order. Birddogs.com slash pool for a free Yeti style tumbler. You won't want to take your bird dogs off. We promise you. I feel like if we uh, got a pair of bird dogs for old friend of the program, Walt. Oh, yes. His response would be something along the lines of, God damn, I got shorts <laughs> that hold your nuts now, huh? <laughs> they really do everything. I, I, Worst part about summer chafing swamp ass. You get none of that. How do they not have Marshawn Lynch as a spokesman? He hold, really hold my dick. <laughs> he's, he's busy doing reads for Manscape, but uh, <laughs> yeah. Oh man. All right. Kramer tight ends. Yeah. I assume. You know, I, is there a way to get spicy here? I did everything I could to not make Travis Kelsey my number one tight end. And of course we're going from one to 10. Cause that's a little bit more fun to see who's gets, who gets left off. I, I tried, but they Travis lost. Kelsey beat the second tight end by 101 <laughs> points. Like you can't, there's just, he's not in the same hemisphere as any other of these guys. And Tyree kill obviously isn't coming back as high as you are Ryan on Kadarius Tony. I don't think he's eaten into Travis Kelsey's workload. Uh, Sky Moore going to steal his targets. It has to be 
Travis Kelsey. Kadarius Tony requires a 90-10 work-life balance. Uh, 10% only in, on the field. So <laughs> He led the NFL in red zone targets with 30, uh, Kelsey. Nice little uh, nugget there. He leads most categories. The, yep. o- the only way you can get cute and find a way to not uh, give him the title would be if you look at the last five weeks of the season, of, of course, excluding week 18, the meaningless week. Uh, he trailed TJ Hawkinson in targets down the stretch. That's it. And, and that required a 16 target day. I mean, the, the, the consistency is out of control. His lowest target week was six. It only happened once. He just gets, he averages nine targets a week. And it's not like a a, a fluky, hey, he had 25 targets one week. Yeah. It's every week he's getting near double digit targets. Juju was supposed to be a guy in the offense. He's gone. I know Andy Reid has said Sky Moore needs to step up. Kadarius Toney's going to be there and and make electric plays on a small percentage of them. And that's why he's going to look so good in the efficiency metrics. People are citing Kadarius Tony as like as elite as Jamar Chase. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Get the the kid can't stay on the field. Uh, MVS, he's a fun deep threat. I just think that so much of this offense just runs through Kelsey. No one's been figuring out how to stop it, and they th- they run plays at a volume that it, I just don't know how you don't do it. Uh, last year, I said in the FFPC, of course, one and a half points per reception for tight ends. I said Kelsey was my number one overall guy. I I I. Uh, it's hard not to say the same in, in thing. In tight end premium, how are you drafting anyone but Travis Kelsey number one? It, it's very hard. Uh, so yeah, I guess that this is where this is where the list starts, the Ryan. List starts. At number two, who just do you like, got? Just like the NBA draft. I'm assuming you're going T.J. Hawkinson. T.J. Hawkinson's interesting oh. because the the target opportunity is there. Uh, you see the way that they it was it was Jefferson and it was T.J. Hawkinson. What's changed? Well, they they went out and drafted. A, a, an actual number two receiver, a kid who by most accounts from the pro guys or the college guys, he's pro ready mm. Addison and Zay flowers. They're, they're great route runners. He's going to always get the, the worst of the secondary. He's going to have opportunities when you have Hawkinson and Jefferson on the same team. So no, I did not go TJ Hawkinson. Okay. I went Darren Waller <laughs> true alpha. At the very top of his game, entering oh, a system wow. where well, he will, he will be the number one receiver. I think when you look at the, at the target charts, like you said, TJ Hawkinson, a clear number two last year, 33 targets behind Travis Kelsey. And I think what the giants plan to do based on me reading the tea leaves and following the team is that Darren Waller is going to be all over the field. Darren Waller is not a tight end on this team. I think you can, st- if you're, if you're a Daniel, is that Bell- because he's going to be injured. If you're a Daniel Bellinger fan, I think he's still going to be lined up out there a lot. You'll get to see those, (laughs) those arm cannons, but Darren Waller and the way that he has spoken about this opportunity with the giants, the way that he has spoken about extending his career, the way that he's spoken about the, the meaning behind him wearing number 12 and, and the, the, the step on, on the journey of his life that this is playing for this New York football giants team, this culture laden, Brian Dable led New York football giants team. There's not many other guys on this list where you can say he is the clear number one target on the team. You can say that about Kelsey. Yes. You can say that about Darren Waller. Daniel Jones likes throwing to big receivers. We saw that with the emergence of Isaiah Hodgins down the stretch. And he also has had success throwing to the, to shitty tight tight ends in his career. All of that being said for TJ or for Darren Waller to, to get the amount of targets probably required to get to this two spot. He's going to have to average in that seven plus range. (laughs) When I, when I've done my projections for the New York football giants on where the targets are going, that would put him somewhere around a 27% target share. I'm okay with that. Stamp it. Darren Waller finishes number two. Sean is Sean. You know what? You said the, uh, the odor, uh, sweat wicking technology in those bird dogs is helping you out right now. It is because you're thinking, holy shit, I'm sweating bullets. Holy over here. shit. If Darren Brian- Waller finishes number two, I'm going to have to rock a mustache for a long time. Well, here's the because thing. Dallas right? Goddard is not number two. I uh, not on your list. He's number oh, two on my list. No, that's right. Dallas Goddard versus 
Darren Waller, aka the Mustache mm. Bed, going oh, this head is to excellent. head in our number two spot. We didn't plan this. Neither one of us could uh, <laughs> could could uh, you know even go so crazy, Homer, as to not have Travis Kelsey yeah, in the number one that's, spot. It's ridiculous. Dallas Goddard is a uh, straight up dog. Continues to be involved more and more each season. Mm. Uh, you look at average; he was fifth in the league average, uh, and that's including with missing a decent number of games. Uh, and then some of the games he was healthy were those Gardner Minshew games, which again highlighted why, um, you know, why Jalen Hurts deserved the MVP. He's gets he gets you some um, twenty plus games. He's consistently getting you double digit points, whereas Darren Waller again only three uh, games last year where he got double digit points. Not Dallas Goddard. He consistently gets that for you. I mentioned uh, when we talk running backs, Miles Sanders leaving. I think that creates a couple touchdown opportunities for Jalen Hurts on the goal line and Dallas Goddard in the red zone. A uh, good number of red zone targets as well for Dallas Goddard. And I think much reason why we had we both had Jalen Hurts number one. I expect this Eagles team to be passing more. More passing opportunities creates more points for Dallas Goddard, especially in this offense. He has not uh, hardly any competition. Uh, when it comes to the tight end position, the Eagles haven't really done anything to move on from Quez Watkins. Yeah, they got uh, Ola Medias, Zacchaeus, but I don't see that shifting anything dramatically. His target share is still going to be super healthy. Give me Dallas Goddard here at number two. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, you you definitely said some shit that was inaccurate about Dal- Darren Waller's year last year. He, I, I believe he had at least four games in double digits, not looking to defend what happened last year, but we also know four. You're right. You're, we also know working behind the scenes and, and when he came back, he looked pretty good, even though the uh, the coach hated him and he was actively <laughs> trying to get traded as, as we Sounds know, like because we're inside. <clears throat> well now, I mean, obviously he was freed and now he's going to show the world <laughs> The true alpha he is, and obviously we we've the, seen the, it before. The, TJ uh, from the research team, oh, wh- he he ha- he pulled some nuggets for me, and next to Darren Waller, who wrote Kramer will rank him second or third. Wow, <laughs> wow, okay. Twenty Man. games played in the last two seasons. Uh, as far as I know, we we're still we just we're talked still- about it. He was playing for dickhead <laughs> coach in Las Vegas. Anyone knows that the Raiders fans are sad that he's gone. No, he's they, a great character guy. Oh yeah. Raiders he's, fans you know are what, super sad. You know what there. Darren Waller is? He's a real six, six, <laughs> not this bullshit. Six, six. He's a grown ass man. He's going to be tough to guard around the red zone. Let's yeah, fucking when, go when they get there. And if he's on the Let's field, let's fucking route. go 2020 uh, best ability availability. 20, I, think I think you're scaring people in the hallway. Uh, I apologize for the language. 2020 <laughs> was the last time that Travis Kelsey and Darren Waller finished one, two in the uh, fantasy rankings. So. Three, yep. Three look, is where things get interesting. Is it spicy takes continue? It, it was hard for me to not uh, put. It, it's hard for me to not have Mark Andrews at number three. Mark Andrews not my top ten. Really? Yes. Uh, it, is this an injury play? This is a Isaiah likely is going to eat into. Ah, uh, but you watch the way that the Todd Munkin used tight ends in, at Georgia. He was fine having two of them. So I, yeah, I, I just don't think he's going. If you look at the red zone stuff they gave to Isaiah Likely, I think that's going to continue. We see this all the time. Like Isaiah Likely got a ton of red zone targets for a rookie tight end. I think that's going to grow here in this next year, and I think that's going to eat into Mark Andrews. Now, maybe it's it's probably a little too hot to not have him in the top ten. Yeah. But I I think I think Isaiah Likely is going to be not beat production, but be really close. I as like far likely. as total fantasy points, I, I got no beef with Isaiah likely. It's just a very hot take. That's yeah. All. Brian, this is why people tune into the podcast. So if they want milk toast rankings, we got there's milk toast so, websites everywhere. So last year they, they split their grab, uh, grab a Pepsi AC and dive into the sports gambling podcast. Uh, so if we look at uh, targets inside the 10 yard line last year, yes, six a piece for likely that, and, that's what I'm saying. Like, but I, if we go to the inside the red zone, yes, Mark Andrews, ele- uh, 18 targets, which was good for fourth in the NFL. But then look at uh, what did I likely do? He still had like he had nine. Yeah. So I, I, again, I think, it, but, but that's a pretty decent split already for like to, to say likely is going to receive one target for every and, two and less, less Odell and I, I or sorry, more Odell. They've obviously done a bunch less of running stuff. game, less running. In that, the, that's true. That's true. I, I just, your argument about him running less, I think also helps 
like Andrews is his blanket. Yeah. Uh, so like I, I think, and I also would say like Mark Andrews, he could fuck around and be the number one tight end this year. I wouldn't be I totally know. surprised. Yeah, I, I guess I'm just there's just something about him. I'm not super excited to have him in my top ten. Again, probably a hot take. He, he just Monkin just came from an offense where the best receiver on the outside was a tight end. So I, I think there's there's a Bowers. There is a world yeah. where Andrews is featured in this offense. I get it. I I get it. I just. Uh, I don't know, man. Something about that Ravens offense in general. The right. just red flag. Who's your three? Too much shifting. Oh, you know who it is. I don't know. Right. Come on. You know who I what tight ends I love. Chick. Oh, come wow. Oh, this is now we're not, I mean No Austin Hooper. <laughs> we're talking about a massive increase in target share. Straight up athletic freak. They gave him three rushing attempts as a rookie ride. Yeah. Oh, who who else is catching passes for this Tennessee Titans team? Uh, Traylon Burks. Okay. Kyle Phillips. Yeah, I mean, even Kyle. It Phillips. gets thin pretty quick. I, <laughs> I'm with you. The it, the better question is, how often is this team going to be passing the ball? I think, but again, Chig, uh, great red zone target. He's. I love finding guys. Had six last year. Yeah, I, and uh, he he almost had uh, two touchdowns in one game. I mean, you look at some of these games in like towards the back half of the season, 10, 18 and a half, 10, two, 5.4, 13.2. Like he, he really has, uh, he's just a fun guy to watch and it, it's rare for teams to scheme up stuff for a tight end, but Chigo Conquo is one of those guys. I'm all in on Chig Ryan. You know, I love Chig. Not what, what, what more do I need to say? Uh, I, uh, I'm looking at my rankings and I'm, I, I don't hate your angle. Yeah. He's certainly an attractive athletic profile. There, there's tight so end. many. We see it with tight ends. We see it with receivers. There's guys that have that good half of their second of rookie season and then really make that jump year two. And Chig is one of those guys I, I have making the jump. Am I maybe reaching a little bit here, putting him at three? Sure, you could make that case. But I just think he's going to be a huge part of that passing offense. And, you know, if you're, uh, if you're Ryan Tannehill. You're throwing the ball to Chico Conquo. I, I think you. I think your take is hot, but I. Yeah, I think that the biggest issue you face is just the volume. <clears throat> we we're we're still in the high volume. The vo the red zone stuff makes up for the volume in my mind. Okay, uh, four. Yeah, for me, T.J. Hawkinson. I again. I also I, got him four. I think it's difficult to get too spicy with him just because uh, what whatever vol whatever metric you want to talk about uh, that measures volume. He might not have like the a dot, the down the field attractiveness that like a Kyle Pitts his, might his lure yards, you in with. But his yards per target was a little low last year. But I don't you, care. No, no, I'm saying I I have him at four. Also, I'm just saying possible reasons not to make him top three. Addison, um, Addison's the old, Addison's the main reason. I yeah, and and we kind of talked a little bit about it previously. I do think maybe Minnesota's defense a little bit better, uh, but again, you're in a dome. You have Justin Jefferson across from you creates a ton of opportunities and his quarterback still Kirk cousins. This is the same yeah. Kirk cousins that looked for him 16 times week, 16, 12 times week, 17 that. looked for him eight yards short of the sticks in the playoffs when they were facing the giants, <laughs> not uh, afraid to check it down. The, Kirk the, cousins, TJ Hawkinson, you know, hopefully some of this goes to Madison. But if TJ Hawkinson turns into the check down guy, then it's it's very hard not to have him here at four because I, I think this prob it probably concludes the high volume category. And then when you even focus in on the red zone stuff, when you when you look at the way that um, Hawkinson was used in the red zone, even it's it, you you got to look to him because guess what? Kelsey twenty nine targets in the red zone. Hawkinson twenty. Yeah. So no, Hawkinson. They stand. They stand out for sure. It's by, hard not to put them in the. By top the way, uh, Mark Andrews, uh, eighteen red zone targets. Mentioned that earlier, but yeah. repeating. All right, who's your? Uh, so anything else to add to Hawkinson? No, I, I think we nailed it. All right, who else you got? Number five. Yeah. I don't even know if I can ride. This might blow your mind. I, I, you're not gonna, you're not gonna say Kyle Pitts right now, are you? Oh no. Okay. <laughs> God no. I thought. Well, that's God, that. No. That would God, blow my no. mind. That would blow my mind. Taysom Hill. Oh my God. I'll tell he's you why. A, he's not even the starter on his own team. It doesn't matter. Juwan Johnson looks electric in OTAs. He, Juwan Johnson's fine. There's a lot of 
I, have you been reading the quotes? You give this is this is from Derek Carr. You give the ball to him, and he's faster than my truck. He runs through and faster runs over a couple of guys and gets a a, a first. A first down. You watch it on tape. It happens over and over again. Nick Underhill reporting. He worked out everywhere during Saints mandatory minicamp. It sounds like, uh, well, first off, Hill became the first player since the AFL NFL merger to score at least 10 touchdowns as a passer, runner, and receiver. They're, they essentially, we'll see what Jamal Williams does, but they run a ton of Taysom Hill running back stuff near the goal line. What's exciting about Taysom Hill from a PPR standpoint is they're looking to use him in the passing game. By all accounts, he is going to have an expanded passing game role as a receiver. Uh, he posted a- his highest totals in rushing yards, 575 rushing yards from a tight end uh, career high in carries 34 first downs. Like he's a guy that's just tough to take off the field. Uh, yeah. I mean, quote lining up all over the place. Yeah. Cause, cause he's going to get a ton of snaps and Ryan, would I be surprised if Taysom Hill plays a couple of games at quarterback? Would I be surprised if he sneaks you in a couple uh, a couple of passing touchdowns? No, not at all. The fact that you can play Taysom Hill as a tight end is just a gift, especially in uh, in underdog in perfect uh, transition. Underdogfantasy.com promo code SGPN get that hundred percent deposit bonus up to one hundred dollars. Underdog.com and put in a hundred, you get a hundred. And essentially, a hundred is four free shots in yeah. Best Ball Mania four, four free bullets. $15 million up for grabs and prizes over at underdog fantasy. Uh, they have the pick them, AKA player props. If player props aren't, aren't legal in your state, perfect place to get down. Uh, underdog is legal in a ton of States. Super fun to play. Best ball drafts are the way to do it. Draft it and forget it. Never have to think about it again. Just go to underdogfantasy.com. promo code S G P N. Kramer, am I uh, being reckless with this? Uh, yeah, a little bit, but it's tight end. But this is it, why people like the show. What the what? Well, I, I <laughs> people love to be told why they love the show. The show, but yes. also I do think that the tight end position. What do we learn every year? It's like well, last year. What Some do we, wild What did we learn? Draft Kelsey or wait? Yeah. And and this year, I I think there's a, a more expanded group of guys who could really achieve like uh, top target share on their team type stuff. Uh, Taysom Hill is hot. You certainly can draft him in like the 15th, 16th, 17th rounds in best ball. So you probably don't need to reach no this high for him. (laughs) No, you don't need to draft him. This is not where you should draft these guys. These are projections about where they're going to end up. Yeah. Fun fact. I am looking at my tight end uh, exposure in all the season long best ball stuff. Uh, Darren Waller, obviously number one, but uh, Taysom Hill is seventh on this list for mm. me, and Chig is number two. There you so, go. So uh, we're pretty aligned with this stuff. All right, number five. Yeah, what do you got? Boy, uh, to me, I think a lot of people, this is where they casually slot in Kyle Pitts and are like, hey, how could I go any lower? What am I going to do? It's hard to not put George Kittle here. The mm. case against Kittle, why he's not in the top five for me, is that he is a boomer bust guy. Well, and, and, and Kittle what kills had a, me, he, he had such an outlier year as far as receiving touchdowns. Eleven destroyed his previous career high. It, it, it he was due seemed for like some a, positive. Yeah, he was due, though. but maybe he unloaded all of it there, and it seemed a lot of it was tied to his connection with Purdy too. So again, tons of question marks as to whether Purdy plays. I, I think regard. I, I think it, it, when you look at the way you look at the target share numbers, you whatever it is, he he bumps. He bumps enough into consistently getting enough targets and consistently being a part of the game plan. Again, he has the ceiling. Why are you taking? uh, Why are you drafting fantasy players? It's a manager. You're playing for the ceiling. I understand it's difficult, but you don't want a guy who's going to score you ten points every week. And Kittle, he's probably the last guy that I have here that really has like that twenty twenty five point potential. I think last week or last year, Kittle uh, put up what four 20 point games. So yeah, I mean, he, ha- he definitely had some duds, but even with all those duds, Sean Kittle finished number two in points per game in PPR fantasy. So yeah, I mean, Kittle is a, is a huge variance guy. I'll, I'll just say it. I have Kittle number seven, but even if you meet, meet in the middle five yeah. and 11, so let's say he gets seven, eight touchdowns. Yeah, no, no, I, eight. I, I, I mean, see it, but I could also see him getting three or four 
based on the uncertainty of quarterback based on, uh, you know, I am higher on market than D on Debo and even slightly higher on market than Christian McCaffrey. I think to me, the uncertainty at the quarterback position, because his production was really tied to uh, Brock Purdy in a real way, also declined in targets and receptions from the previous year. That's why I got him there at seven, but yeah, I, it's tough to be completely out on him again. Not many there, there aren't a ton of tight ends left who are oftentimes the primary target on the passing plays. Yeah. So who's your, so that was your, he was your five. five. Who do you have at six? Number six, uh, potentially a little hot here, gotten much higher on him of late. Uh, people are too busy off looking at uh, David Bell. Maybe they're peering at Cedric Tillman. Maybe it's Elijah Moore. Oh, certainly. I, I also have him at six. Certainly. I don't have enough of Amari Cooper for the situation, but David and Joku yep. is, is every bit the monster that people want Kyle Pitts to be. Uh, he he's, he's a chief. First of all, that's incredibly intimidating on the football field. He is, was third last year in red zone targets behind only Kelsey and Hawkinson with 19. Uh, and, and he, he is used as we were just describing, I understand Amari Cooper's there, but oftentimes David and Joku is, is the primary read for Deshaun Watson. Now, again, making a slight bet on Deshaun Watson here, but this is the tight end position. I think once you get out of that top group, I'm yeah. looking for touchdowns. Are you going to be used around the red zone? Uh, and, and when you had, when you came, when you're coming into a season, uh, coming off a season where you were third in, in red zone targets, that's intriguing to me. I also, I mean, Amari Cooper is not getting younger. I think there's a very real possibility that this offense is more about Nick Chubb and David Njoku than it is Amari Cooper. Yeah, that's a great point. Uh, I'm also on Njoku at six here. It was a career year and he missed three games. So again, not super high on Deshaun Watson, but I would imagine it's going to be at least slightly better. They paid him too. In Joku. Yeah. Yeah. No, clearly they're going to use him a lot. I mean, Harrison Bryant is fun. If Njoku misses a couple games or maybe as a dark horse, uh, first touchdown bet, Harrison Bryant, but yeah, David and Joku all day. Love him here at six. Yeah. And, and, uh, one, one last thing to add, like, I do. I do wonder with the, the Cleveland is Cleveland and Minnesota are the two teams where I look at my rankings and I'm like, well, wait a second. I'm much higher on these guys in fantasy <laughs> than I am in real life. And I, than I am with the quarterback. So maybe I need to reshuffle yeah. the quarterback opinion. All right. So seven. And I have Kittle at my seven, but what'd you oh, do okay. at seven Ryan? Seven is going to surprise you a little bit. Really? I, I think it might. I, I think again, I think you're going to hear a lot of people come in here with, with Kyle Pitts takes. Yes. I, again, focus for me is, can you be the number one target on your team? I do think Pat Fryermuth is the number one oh, target love it. for the Pittsburgh Steelers in the red zone. I do think that I I'm, 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 you know, slowly if you listen to the quarterback episode, slowly uh, leaning in harder and harder to the idea that they're going to take a nice step forward in their passing attack. I'm, I'm going to jump in uh, Pat Fryermuth. I have at eight, but obviously also huge Fryermuth guy, 12 uh, red zone targets last year, Yep. which by the way, best, best on his team. And, and made a nice jump from year one to year two yards per reception, 8.3 up to 11.6. Uh, and he kind of ran cold in touchdowns last year. He only had two last year, seven, the previous year. I feel like he's due for some nice uh, touchdown regression here. As we sort things out, what's your take? I, I'm not worried, but they did draft Darnell Washington in the third round. Probably worth mentioning. I don't see him blocker. Yeah. I don't see him eating up a ton of the fryer moves stuff. But we're worth noting, but I'm with you. I I'm super high on this Steelers offense. I'm high on Fryermuth. Love him. Penn State kid. What's not to like? How, how many tight ends last year averaged over six targets a game? Say five. Travis Kelsey, TJ Hawkinson, Mark Andrews, Zach Ertz. Funny enough. <laughs> uh, Tyler Higg, Zach Ertz doesn't count. Didn't play enough. Uh, well, Ty Zach Ertz was six in scoring per game last year, yeah. which is Tyler Higby and Pat Fryer move. So the, the list of stay tuned of quarterbacks, uh, pets are not very obviously lower efficiency, yada, yada, yada. Yeah. But Pat Fryer is it's so easy in best ball to get George Pickens, Pat Fryer and Kenny Pickett 
little Jalen Warren on the back end. Yeah, or do, Allen do Robinson it. deep, oh, like I, as your I'm, last pick. I'm not in on Allen Robinson. <laughs> I'm, I'm not listening Shout to Shout out him. to Scott Bowser. Not, not listening to He's that. A, if you have Kenny Pickett, I'm okay drafting him in your 18th okay. round there. Fair enough. So, yeah, I, I, I jumped ahead. I, I gave you a seven Kittle, eight Friar Muth. Well, who's your eight, Kramer? All right. I... I, I wanna I wanted to to eventually get get spicy, so th- Waller was to Dallas Goddard. I'll drop him into the eight spot. Uh, mm. I do I do think that he. Thank you for including him. Uh, he is getting he is a very affordable stack. If you do have Jalen Hurts and you can't afford, or you don't want to pay up for AJ Brown, well, Devonta Smith. If you don't want to pay up for Devonta Smith, best ball. Devonta Smith is really working himself pretty high. Basically, you have to draft those guys all in the first two rounds, so it's near impossible. Yeah. And if I'm building a team, I mean, especially in managed, I, I do like the idea of correlating your quarterback and tight end together. I know it can create some difficult roster decisions, but you're going to rise and, and, and fall with, with your quarterbacks. You might as well have the tight end. Maybe Increased that passing touch, role that in general for the Eagles. So I, I guess that, that that's my angle here. If Dallas Goddard and the entire Eagles offense, you kind of have to project them to take a step forward because I don't, I don't think they're going to be the same t- kind of running team as they were for better or for worse. And so Dallas Goddard to me, if anything, it's almost like when you when we're talking about the running backs where you have you have the stud running back and then you have the really good backup, but he's going like eight rounds later. Yeah. Devonta Smith going in the second round, Dallas Goddard going in the fifth or sixth round. Yeah, you can make a case Goddard may be a better value at that ADP. And obviously I love AJ Brown. We'll get into that during the uh receivers talk, but uh it's yeah, I mean again, three three amazing weapons. Shout out to Howie Roseman. I I Well and also just like what what if I understand the AJ Brown, Jalen Hurts connection. They went to like yes. Mickey Mouse Club together and all that good stuff. Oh, but Ryan, how dare you? I'm not. I mean, you know, I mean, if, if as, as a, if I asked you as a grown adult to go hang out in Disneyland with me, what would you Love say? It. What would you Thanks say? Thanks for inviting. Oh me. yeah, I'm sure you would. So yeah, that, <laughs> we that, did go to Disneyland. I mean, that wasn't me inviting you. That was a, <laughs> that was a wife situation, and it was for Halloween to get drunk. <laughs> Is the but only we, except, but, but did we? Did you not invite me to Disneyland? No, I did. We my, my wife invited. I, I had nothing to do with it. Well, your wife invited my wife. Either no. way, we ended up at we, Disneyland. We had to go. It was like the time we uh, we saw the dick at the Halloween haunted house. <laughs> Woo, it's we'll Halloween. save that we for a, a behind the scenes story. <laughs> yeah, there's more context to that. That was it was a part what? of a performance, I guess. Uh, one of my greatest predictions ever. Yeah, actually. we I, were. If we were touting real, that real quick, the <laughs> the Cliff Notes version. We go to this haunted house. And uh, it, it's like a bunch of these crazy, like live actors. There's and warning signs everywhere. Like warning, flashing lights, warning, you know, simulated violence, warning, nudity. And Ryan goes, we're about to see a dick tonight. <laughs> and he goes, there's no way you warn someone if it's tits. It, you need to warn people if it's a dick. And we go in through this entire haunted house. No, no nothing crazy. And then we go down this basement. And then the strobe light comes on. And there's this guy. What do you, what do you have? Like a pickaxe or something? It's a classic like demon or something. Yeah. And then all of a sudden the demon's naked. We're like, oh my God. So you nailed it. Uh, I did. I did brag about that prediction after the yes. fact. All right. Dallas got her number eight. Which, by the I way, I want would, a dick rubbed on me tonight. I mean, why does the demon have to be naked? I, I, <laughs> I don't. Like, I didn't understand the artistic uh, choice. Either. Oh, this demon has a soft horn on <laughs> on its opposite head. He need the demon. Demon needed some sword vitality. Uh, that would have been worse. Then I would have been worried that like, it's like the same feeling when a flock of birds flies <laughs> over you. Like, please don't let it hit me. Please don't let it hit me. Uh, so wait, Kramer, you gave out your eighth. I'm gonna go number nine here, Tyler Higby. I, I, to me, it's just Tyler Higby, Cooper cup. As much as I love my boy, uh, Ben Skoranek, uh, the, the Rams could be playing from behind a lot oh. with that defense. That's why I think Stafford is interesting for some of these passing yardage stuff. Are we worried about McVay having a kid one, <laughs> one foot out the door? Maybe the offense won't be all the way dialed up. I mean, he had 108 targets and 72 receptions, um, last year. And I know obviously Cooper cup missed the a decent a chunk of the season, but I expect him to have a massive role again. I think if Stafford stays healthy, uh, their, their offense should be, you should be able to get a couple more touchdowns than he got last year. Three. 
I just think he's a huge PPR guy. Like he's just a guy that's going to, I mean, he's, he's a tight end that I think is going to get well over a hundred targets. He's basically I, in, a, in an offense. That's going to be out there a ton. I think he's, he's great uh, best ball pick, but I think he's going to put up the numbers as well. So yeah, give me Tyler Higby here at number nine. Red zone target guy. I mean, you know, points per game. He was right around the the 10 spot last year. Yeah. I mean, if you look at his, I mean, overall points, he was six last year. Yeah. You, you look at, uh, yeah, he, he had a good average. You, uh, it feels like it's a hot take, but I, I really don't think it is. He's I, going very late. The Rams offense in general is being, being very disrespected again. Like people forgot about Cooper cup because he got hurt so early in yeah. the season. People forgot because Stafford got hurt, but you even look at Higby like first five weeks of the season, he's averaging over nine targets a game. He's heavily involved in the situation. Uh, did you, did you already call out his red zone? No, but his red zone numbers are really good too. Uh, both percentage wise and total. They had 15 red zone targets last season. It, it's hard to not get him in. I, I did have him uh, as, as my number, my, my number 10. Hmm. It's just, he's going so late. You end up with him a ton. He's a great bring back for a week 17 giants uh, stack. He's a, he's an, obviously like the Stafford build is very, you go Cooper cup first round. You can get the rest of the Rams for almost yeah. nothing. And you know, last we saw they, at minimum, they have a functional offense. I don't know if it will be a great offense anymore, but it's a functional offense that can produce and, and the, fantasy think, points and the defense not being great, I think is going to create a lot of uh, negative game script, AKA Maddie Stafford going to be tossing the ball a ton. Ryan. Well, who is your, who's your number nine? It has to be Chig Conquo, right? No, Ch Chig is right on the outside. Oh looking my in. God. I, I, I'm worried a little bit about the volume. Uh, also on the outside looking in was uh, Gerald Everett. I really wanted Gerald to Everett's interesting. I'm just slightly lower on Herbert and their passing game, in it, which general. is, which is fair, but Gerald Everett popped off on my on my uh, red zone targets yeah. metric. Uh, also not in Sean. Did we both take Kyle Pitts out of our top? Yes. Top 10? Okay. Uh, take him out. He was never in. Well, man. he's never you know been in mean. there. All right. So my number nine guy, uh, he, he's a guy who changed team. Sean, mm. he stayed in the same state. Okay. He is now playing uh, in an offensive system that has a uh, spotlight of the tight end before. Ooh. And by all accounts, he is making great chemistry with rookie CJ Stroud. Oh, wow. Dalton Schultz is absolutely a guy I love this year. You can, you know, I, I, I could even see him be number seven above got Dallas Goddard and Pat Fryermuth. I think there's a real version where he's the primary target. We, <laughs> we, I mean, Sean, we love Damian Pierce. <laughs> oh, right. And we're, just the we're, Texans love it. We're, so all right. But Nico, Nico like Collins, John Mechie, <laughs> yeah. Robert Woods, Tank Dell, we don't know who the alpha is going to be. Who's going to yeah. garner the most target share. It very well could be Dalton Schultz. Think about that offense. No, the I, play I, action. Do, I do like, I do like a, a rookie Dal quarterback using this title. Dalton Schultz has shown he can be a red zone, red zone target. A trusty one received 16 targets last year on the Cowboys uh, from, from rain Dakota. He, again, he, he wasn't quite the primary target in Dallas, but he can handle the workload. He's not an explosive guy, but he knows how to get open and find the holes in the zone for the rookie quarterback, CJ Stroud to find him. I think he's probably more of a lower efficiency play, higher volume. So yeah, if you want to have that argument, maybe with a uh, Kyle Pitts or, or Chig versus Dalton Schultz fair, but I, I, I will say I have my best ball exposure right in front of me. <laughs> Darren Waller, Chig, TJ Hawkinson, Dalton Schultz is number number four on that list. Wow. And so uh, whether it's my my Texan homerism yes. or it's the fact that I am just all in on the idea that their offense is going to be much better than the market thinks it's going to be. Uh, he he's in here. To me, uh this this whole slew of tight ends, same thing. If you if you're out on tight end, just wait because Higby, he's fine. Everett, he's fine. Yeah. Dalton Schultz, he's fine. And all of these guys, you can get late as fuck. I mean, uh, my, my tight end sh strategy is get Travis Kelsey if you can. If not, then just try and stack. And and even in best ball, like using those last three rounds to get tight yeah. ends, there's good options. I'm going to name one of them. My number 10 spot, Luke Musgrave. He's the starting tight end. Oh. He's the starting <laughs> tight end for the Green Bay Packers. You he know who's going to love that, Sean? 
Our boy Dryden, Oregon State Beavers. Yes. Shout out to the Beavers. Dude, he's a super athletic guy. Who else on that Packers team is like the number one pass catcher, Ryan? He, all right, he's a rookie. That's why yeah, you're scared. The rookie, but, the rookie thing is real. And but that's the volume why is, is there. The volume's there. Now, they took another tight end in the third round, but he's he's so far ahead of him. I wouldn't be surprised if they run a shit ton of 12 and 13 personnel. Look at you. Alan Lazard, 100 targets vacated. Like, if you're... If you're Matt LaFleur, you're giving, you're giving Jordan love easy stuff, right? You're giving him easy catch and run stuff with athletic guys. You could make a, you could I, make a pretty easy argument. Now, maybe, maybe you say Aaron Jones or whatever, but you could make a pretty easy argument. Luke Musgrave is there. I don't know. Like he's just going to be a part of the offense. I, I, think, I think everyone, I know they got dubs and, and Christian Watson, but man, Musgrave is going to have a big role and you're getting a starting tight. Like maybe this is put me putting him at 10 is because I just love the value. Cause you can you get him so insanely it. late. It's an excuse to talk about Luke Musgrave, but it's a great name. By the way, I think he's, he, he's a guy first touchdown, oh. uh, 100%, two touchdowns, two touchdown, oh. 100%. What do we call running back? We call a bell cow. What do we yeah. call a tight end? Mm. By the way, you were sharing your tight end strategy. Mine is to a bell bull. Mine is do more squats. Yours is draft Travis Kelsey. I'm making it. I'm making a butt joke, Sean. Uh, that was for the. That was for the late. Our fans outside want. Uh, hey, great, great to see you. Uh, yeah, I mean, anyone else you want to mention being left off to spurn them? Evan Ingram and Kyle Pitts are in the same category to me. I, Ingram, I, Ingram, I have higher than Kyle Pitts. I mean, Kyle Pitts is just like, dude, I gotta see something. Just complete zero. And I, I, I and sorry, this idea that uh, Desmond Ritter has to be better than Marcus Mariota. Not so fast. Not so fast. There's a, oh, there's Sean. a, there's a less than 0% chance. Ooh. Desmond Ritter fucking sucks. Well, you uh, mean greater than 0% chance. Uh, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> there is a greater <laughs> than 0% chance that Desmond Ritter sucks. He, I mean, come on, Kyle Pitts, 25th in points per game, 33rd in total points. Um, and that, that was his leap year from year one to year two. Oh yeah. The quarterback suck. Well, okay. Are we sure Desmond Ritter is awesome? I, I just no. don't see it. We're not. Um, Kyle but. Pitts, probably great in space. Hey, flag football expo coming up. Hang out. We could use you on the roster. Let's go. I, Non-contact. I, I would say the the dark horse guy that I would throw out that I can't put in in the rankings because he's going for free, but he could very well be a top. Like if he ended up being a top five guy, I wouldn't be that surprised. And it's you know Zach Hurts gets hurt. And Trey McBride comes in. Well, Zach just Hurts, because the targets were flowing to yeah. the tight end in that system. Now, and, granted, it's a different system. You, like yeah. you said, we, Jonathan Gannon. Similar, similar case we made uh, in the running backs episode for James Conner. I think you could make for Trey McBride. I liked uh, a little bit of what I saw Trey McBride. I had a lot of best ball shares of him last year. Again, probably a year early on him. So I, I I'm not shocked if he has a nice uh, breakout year. Someone to keep an eye on. What about Logan Thomas? You buying the he's going to be the Travis Kelsey no, piece in the in the no. Eric Bieniemy it, offense? It's just it's just been too many injuries, too much. Uh, yeah, just too much for uh, Logan Thomas. All right, Tyler Conklin is interesting depending on the Jets offense, but okay, I'll give you one more. What do you got? I mean, we we should mention Dolchich. Okay, lot, lot of lot of buzz coming out. We at first thought Albert O would be let out of the doghouse. Because he was in the doghouse yeah. with Hackett, it now seems like Peyton has seen Dolchich's hair and is very excited as well about what he can <laughs> Taysom do. Taysom Hill role for Greg Dolchich. Uh, so yeah, I mean, other than that, like a lot of the a lot of the mid tier guys are actually not very sexy to me. No. Like, once you get past the Higbees of the world and, and all of these other guys I've mentioned, it's like Knox, Hayden Hurst, Gasecki, Cole Komet, not interested. Jelani Woods, I would add to my first uh, right. touchdown list. Gun to your head, yeah, rookie with the most tight end fantasy points. No, it's well, I have to say Luke Musgrave okay. because he's in my, top I'll say Sam list. Laporta. Okay. Most pro ready guy, him or mayor. I think see mayor to me opportunity meets uh mayor to me. I think why I have Musgrave over mayor is because mayor is going to be keep compete with Hooper. Austin Hooper. And again, like tight ends are just tough to get a, to get the, the workload oh. a, to earn the targets. But again, Luke Musgrave running with the ones in OTAs. By, by that logic, aren't you worried about Brock Wright, James Mitchell over there in Detroit with Sam Laporta? 
No, I, no, I don't have Sam Laporta in there. No, no, I'm just saying, like, it, the, the, the share is, is real. Yeah. Hey, what do we got, Ryan? We have fantasy football receivers left. Last of our uh, top 10 positional uh, preview series here, of course. Uh, bird dog shorts. Get, you some, get some bird dog shirts. Board, Birddogs.com slash pool. Make sure you Smash. that subscribe button. YouTube.com slash sports gambling podcast. We got uh we got our college football preview series, some uh, conference previews coming up right around the corner. Make sure you toss us a nice rating review over on Apple Podcasts. Always appreciate that. Uh, reward some lucky listeners with some uh, sweet sweet SGPN gift cards. Thank you for participating in the Sports Gambling Podcast. For the Sports Gambling Podcast, I'm Sean, second the money green, and he is Ryan. I really can't wait to bet on Tyler Conklin two touchdowns. Kramer, let it. Right.